Hello and welcome to Nitharanya YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and today we're going to learn how to play a big game in a small box called The Red Cathedral from the Dever Games. Place the game board in the middle of the play area. Sort these influence cards by their type. Randomly assign one type to each quadrant of the game board. And then again randomly choose one card from each deck and then place the chosen card on the dedicated space on the game board face up. Then take these resource tiles and randomly place one in each of these spaces. Then take all five dice in the game, choose any suitable method to randomize their order and roll all the dice and place the first one in the section with this cross in any of those three empty spaces, place the second die in the next section and continue until you place all the dice. Take these building plan cards and randomly choose one for the current player count, so one of these for a three player game, and shuffle these bases, middle sections and domes and build the construction site as shown on the building plan card. All the cards in a construction site should be placed face up. You can put all the remaining cards back in the box. Shuffle all the workshop tiles and if you play a two-player game, remove all the tiles with this icon in the top right hand corner. Then place one workshop tile randomly on each card in the construction site, flip all the tiles face up and return all the remaining tiles back into the box. Then each player takes a personal workshop board and for your first game use this basic side. Place four banners on the inventory and two banners nearby. Then four ornamentations in their respective spaces on the player board. And each player also takes a scoring marker, which is placed on the space 2 of the scoring track. Randomly choose the first player and that player receives 3 rubles. Second and third player in the player order would receive 4 rubles. And the fourth player would receive 5 rubles. When you decide to play with this advanced side of your player board, those two leftover banners and four ornamentations are placed in these spaces. The game is played in turns, starting with the first player and then continuing in a clockwise direction until the end of the game. On your turn, you must perform one of the following three actions. First, you can claim a cathedral section, basically reserving that section for you, which means you will be the one building that section. With the second action you can acquire resources, you will move the die and then take the resources from that landing zone. In addition you will also be able to use the abilities on the card associated with that quadrant. And finally with the build action you can place the material on your reserved or claimed cathedral sections and when you deliver all the required materials you will get the indicated number of coins and recognition points. In addition to the mandatory action, you can also perform some free actions. With one of them, you can lose a prestige point, which means you move back to the nearest symbol like this. And for that, you get two coins. Or again, if you lose one prestige point, you can reroll all the dice in one section. Now, the victory point track has two types of points. These ones in small increments are called recognition points. These ones are called prestige points. You get recognition points for completing these cathedral sections and you can get the prestige points for building the decorations. Every time you gain a recognition point you move one space forward on the track and every time you gain prestige point you move to the nearest prestige point on the track. Every time you have to lose the prestige point you move back to the nearest prestige point symbol. When any player successfully builds their 6th card, 6th section of the cathedral, the end of the game is triggered and all other players have one final turn, excluding the player who triggered the end of the game. Then during the final scoring you will score each tower separately and the player who contributed most to that tower will score the full amount of victory points for that tower, the second player will get half the points and so on and so forth. I will explain this final scoring in detail at the end of the video. Then the player with the most prestige points is the winner. In this chapter of the video I will cover all the actions in more detail and we'll start with a claim a section. 
With this action you will reserve one card or one section of the cathedral. First, take a banner from your player board and ideally from this inventory area and place it on top of the card which is not claimed yet, so the card which doesn't have any banner on it. Players must claim sections from bottom to top, so you can either claim the base card or if the base is claimed you can claim the card on top of it. In this third column you would be able to claim this card and so on and so forth. Then after placing the banner take the workshop tile from that card and you can place this tile in any of these empty workshop spaces. If you want to place the tile face up you have to pay the indicated cost in rubles, in this example it would be 3 rubles and you can take the benefit from that tile immediately. So here it would be one gold resource. Later in the game, anytime you use this die, you can gain this benefit when gathering resources. If on the other hand, when you take the tile and you don't want to pay or you don't have the enough money, you can place the tile face down, but you will not get any benefit from that tile and you will not be able to get any benefit even later in the game. When you play with the advanced board, the cost is always 3 rubles and when you pay the cost you can unlock one of the ornamentations but not these banners. Then you can gain the benefit of the tile exactly as on the basic side. If you don't have the rubles or you don't want to pay you can place the tile face down on any of those spaces but that permanently locks that ornamentation and it will not be available until the end of the game. In order to place a tile in any of these white spaces, you must first use these banners to claim a cathedral tile, which you can do in any of your previous actions, and only then you can place the workshop tile face up in this space, again after paying those 3 rubles. With the acquire resources action, you can gain resources from this rondel from the market. To do that, choose any die from the rondel and move that die number of spaces equal to the value of that die, so in this example it would be one, two, three sections. You always move the die in the clockwise direction as indicated by these arrows. Each section can contain maximum three dice, so if you would move the die and that die would end up in the same section, you may not use that die. If you move the white die or the die of your color, and by color I mean your player color, you can move your die additional spaces forward and for each space you have to pay one ruble. So if I would be the yellow player I can pay one ruble and move the die one section forward. You can move the die as many sections as you want, for each one you have to pay one ruble. Then after moving the die you can perform the market actions. Those actions are taking resources from the corresponding section using the ability on the card from the corresponding quadrant and activating your workshop tile if you have any tile associated with the die of that color. All these actions are optional and you can do them in any order you want. When taking resources, take the resources indicated on the tile as many times as there are dice in that section. So in this case I would take two stone and all the resources are placed in your inventory and each inventory space can only contain maximum one resource. When you gain resources and you wouldn't have any space available in your inventory, you are not allowed to discard any of those resources and those you gained are basically lost. Now if any other player would use this die and move it four sections, that player would gain four stones. The second market action allows you to use one of the abilities on the card in the same quadrant where you placed your die and you can only use one of those two abilities. The description of those abilities can be found at the end of the rulebook and the ability with this flash symbol can only be used once per turn. Abilities with this red symbol can be used as many times on your turn as you want. Now remember you can use these market actions in any order you want, so after you place the die in the section, if you would like to take the resources but your inventory is full, you can use the ability on the card first and only then take the resources from the resource tile. The third market action you have available is activating your workshop if you use the die of that color and you have any workshop tile in that space and you activate that tile only one time 
And if that tile would show any die of any color, look at the section of the game board where die of that color is located and you take that resource one time. Even if the section would contain multiple dice, you only take it once. If you use white die and you have both spaces occupied, you can only choose one of those bonuses, not both. At the end of the action, take all the dice from the section where you placed your die, re-roll the dice, and place them back with these new values. With the build action, you may move up to three materials from your inventory to build or decorate a cathedral. When you decide to build a section of the cathedral, you can only build one of your unfinished sections, and you don't have to finish those sections in one go. So, for example, I can place one material here and two materials on this section. If you complete a section, in this example, the section has two bricks and one purple gem, return the materials to the general supply and gain the indicated number of recognition points and potentially also some rubles. Then flip the card to the other side, but keep your banner on it. If you complete a section and there are incomplete sections below that section in the same tower, all players with those unfinished sections will lose some recognition points and they lose as many points as there are completed sections above their section. So the green player would lose two recognition points. However, you don't count the sections with your own banners, so the yellow player would lose one recognition point and only one because this one doesn't count. Then each completed card, completed section can be decorated with one decoration. Bases can be decorated with door, Middle sections can be decorated with arch and domes can be decorated with a cross. As you can see, you can decorate any completed card, not just your own section. Each decoration requires certain resources. Doors require wood, windows or arches require stone and crosses require gold. If you also add some jewels, you can score prestige points. Building decorations is part of the build action, so you can only spend three resources and all the decorations must be built in one go. So to build the door, for example, you need to spend one wood. In addition to wood, if you spend a jewel, let's say one jewel, you gain one prestige point. If you spend another jewel of the same color, you would score two prestige points. However, if you would use the jewel of the different color, as indicated over here, you would score three prestige points instead of just two prestige points. So with wood and two jewels of the different color, I can take the door and place it on any base which doesn't have the door yet. Then I can immediately score those prestige points. In this case, it would be three prestige points. You can combine the build and decorate action together. In this example, I only need one more brick to complete this section. So that would be one resource. With that, this base section is completed. I would score seven recognition points and gain three rubles. And since I can still deliver two more materials, I could take this wood and the gem and I can place the decoration and score one prestige point. So this is how you can build and decorate using the same action. In addition to one mandatory action, you can also use these free actions. This one can only be used once per turn and for one prestige point, you can reroll all the dice in one section. So for example, for one prestige point, if I don't like these dice, I could reroll all those dice. The other free action can be repeated any number of times as you want. Again, for one prestige point, you would gain two rubles. When one player completes their sixth section, sixth card in the cathedral, and gets all the recognition points for the card, the end of the game is triggered, and as a reward for triggering the end of the game, that player gains three prestige points. All other players in a clockwise direction have one last turn. After that, the game is over. During the final scoring, each player will get one prestige point for each five resources they have, so in this example, it would be only one prestige point. And then you would score each tower in the cathedral. First, calculate the total value for each tower. Each completed section has a value of two prestige points. 
and each decoration is worth one prestige point. Don't count the unfinished sections. In this example we have four finished sections in the tower, so that's eight prestige points, plus one for the arch and one for the door, so that's ten prestige points for this tower. Now calculate the contribution of each player. Green player contributed with this section and this decoration, so that's three prestige points. This one is not finished, so it doesn't count. Yellow player completed two sections, so that is four prestige points. And red player also has one card, one section and one decoration, so that's three prestige points. Now, the player with the most contribution, in this case the yellow player, gains the total value of the entire tower, so in this case 10 prestige points. Mark those prestige points immediately on the scoring track. Then the player with the second highest contribution gets the half of the previous score rounded down, so in this case it's 5 prestige points. The third player also gets half of the previous score rounded down, so that will be 2 prestige points, and so on and so forth. In our example we have both red and the green player with the same contribution of 3 prestige points. And in case of a tie, calculate the prestige points for both spaces. So that's 5 prestige points for the second place and 2 for the third place, which is 7 prestige points in total. Divide that by 2 and round down, and that is 3 prestige points for both players. Again, mark those scores on the scoring track. You have to have at least one contribution to score any prestige points, so when scoring this tower, yellow player wouldn't score anything. Perform this final scoring for each tower, and then the player with the most prestige points is the winner. So that's how you play the Red Cathedral. If you would have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can even support the channel on the Patreon page. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Berec and hope to see you next time.